In the second practice problem for the exam, White Company is revising its depreciation estimates on a building that it purchased at the end of 1984 for $800,000. At the time it purchased the building, it estimated that the residual value, otherwise known as the salvage value, would be $200,000, and that the building would have an estimated life of 30 years. In 2005, management believes that the useful life of the building will actually be 35 years, and the residual value will be 250000 So in other words, management has revised the depreciation estimates. The accumulated depreciation on the building at the end of 2004 is $400,000. Calculate revised straight-line depreciation beginning in 2005. So remember, when companies revise their depreciation estimates, they, go, they don't go back and restate prior period financial statements. They only change depreciation in the current year and going forward. So since management revised the estimates in 2005, we're going to leave everything alone from before that and only revise the depreciation for 2005 and going forward. So the first step is we need to figure out how much depreciation expense has already been recorded. And that amount is actually given to us in the problem. We're told that the accumulated depreciation was $400,000 as of the end of 1984 but we can figure out how that amount was calculated if we're curious. And how it was calculated is that the original $800,000 cost plus the original estimate of the residual or salvage value equals 600,000. And that amount is the depreciable cost, the amount that we're going to depreciate or that we originally had planned on depreciating. And the useful life originally was estimated to be 30 years, so the annual depreciation expense, the former amount that we have been taking through 1984, was 20000 per year. So since we purchased the building at the end of 1984, we would have started taking depreciation in 1985. Now, this is a little confusing, figuring out how many years we would have taken depreciation expense, but how you calculate it is by taking the year 2004, the last year that we recorded depreciation expense using our original estimates, and subtracting the first year that we recorded depreciation, 1985. That difference is 19 years, but it doesn't take into account the fact that we recorded depreciation both in the starting year and the ending year. So since this is just the difference, we need to add one more year. And that tells us that we've taken depreciation for 20 years total thus far. You can also count on your fingers starting with 1985 and ending with 2004 and you'll see that in fact 20 years have gone by. So if we multiply the 20 years by 20,000 in depreciation expense each year, we can see how the $400,000 accumulated depreciation figure was obtained. So that now that we know the amount of accumulated depreciation taken thus far and the original cost, we can see what the book value is now at the beginning of 2005. So we have $400,000 remaining in book value. And that's the most that we could depreciate in the future. But we want to take into account our new residual value of $250,000. So we don't want to depreciate the $250,000 of residual value because that's how much we think we can receive for the building in cash when we sell it at the end of its useful life. So the amount that we have left to depreciate then 
is the remaining book value as of the beginning of 2005 less our new estimate of the new residual value. So we have 150,000 left that we can depreciate. And we have 15 years left of our estimated useful life because remember, our new estimate of the useful life is 35 years, and that's 35 years total. And since we've already taken 20 years of depreciation, we have 15 years left that we can depreciate the building. So we're going to take the 150,000 amount that's left to depreciate, divide it by the 15 years of remaining useful life, to get to our new revised annual depreciation expense, which we will begin taking in the year 2005. Some common mistakes that students make is they subtract the old salvage value up here and they subtract the new residual value. So we don't want to subtract both, we only want to subtract the new estimate of the residual value. And another common mistake is to divide the amount that we have left to depreciate by the total number of years of useful life rather than the number of years remaining. So that's how we would solve this type of problem.